Well, we're joined today by Mike Jay and Stephen Byrne, authors of the official definitive history of Bristol Rovers. Mike, first of all, this is the third one, I think, isn't it? Or the updated version? The second one, actually, Keith. Yeah, we brought the first one out in 2003, um, which was fairly successful. Um, and so we've just uh, updated it for the last 10 years and amended some of the early details, uh, correcting some things, adding different things into the original book. But there are obviously lots of things that have happened in the last 10 seasons. Um, Possibly not, not some good things the last uh, 12 months, but um, yeah, it, it's it's a good um, it's a good record of the whole club's whole history, so from 1883 right up until you know 2014. So it's, it's bang up to date. It's difficult to get everything in one volume, isn't it? You've, you've added some new photos, but you've had to leave some out from the, the original one. Yes, unfortunately, the uh, the narrative in the book is very extensive. I mean, we've covered every every season basically, um, so it's a considerable amount of words. Um, and when the publishers came to us at the end saying that there was limited amount of space for photos and statistics. But uh, stats-wise, uh, we've got everything in there from 1946 right up to end of last season. Um, and it's, we have got other stats available which have already been done from the 1880s right up, uh, up till 1945, which people can uh, get from us if they email us. There's an email contact uh, address in the book. So if anyone wants further details, we're more than willing to help them with extra extra information, particularly statistics. Can I just ask you, Mike, first of all, how, how you've divided the work up with two of you credited with, with the title? Yeah, Stephen was the, probably, well, did 19, over 90% of the book in respect of the narrative. I edited it and added bits and pieces, but Stephen did a considerable amount of research um, on the early days and um, we, you know, he's done a fantastic job on the narrative basically. Um, so I did a lot of the statistical stuff and the photographs and checking and proofreading and that type of thing, um, which is very enjoyable. But as I say, we'd ideally like to have had more photographs <coughs> in the book than, than, than we were allowed, but uh, obviously the book is fairly substantial. So... Um, we, we couldn't get any more in, but uh, yeah, Stephen did the bulk of the work on this book, certainly, yeah. Uh, Mike, Stephen, Stephen yeah. Can, yeah, I mean, you go into great detail, especially in the early years, which I think yeah. is fascinating. I, I, I don't know how you do that. Oh, the, the information's all out there somewhere, you've just got to, got to look and it's, it's somewhere around. Um, it's great fun collating it and making sure everything's in, in one volume. Um, Mike has put a huge amount of work into um, collating lineups and, and charts of, of that sort so it's a shame that some of that's not in but so much of it is in this book um, so what we we try to do is take it from the very first game all the way through uh, try and give as much detail to games played in the 1890s as games played five years ago I think they're of, they're of equal value it's all part of the rich history of the club Unfortunately, it's not a happy ending, is it? Because you end on the, the relegation season. It will be a happy ending when <laughs> Volume 3 comes out. <laughs> Did this work 10 years to update? I mean, is, this, is that a reasonable length of time to pass before you update it again? I suspect so, because copies continue to sell, and the, the, the older copy of the book, there are still copies around, and they are selling for good prices. Um, and I think people are interested, but it, we just felt it was time to, to update and to bring the story up to, up to where we are now. And the two of you have collaborated on a, on a number of Rovers books and you've each published in your own right. I, I know, Stephen, you're working on another one for next year, aren't you? We are both hoping to bring out a, um, some sort of update of the Who's Who, the Pirates in Profile, which first came out in 1994-95. Um, that obviously is 20 years out of date now, so that needs a bit of work, but we, we have it in computerised form at the moment. Whether that comes out as a book or not is... A, is the big question really, quite possibly not. Um, books are books are being produced in different forms now and this you know this this may be a collector's item. <laughs> but it's obviously very enjoyable, we're very time consuming and mm. people may not know Stephen but for the last four years you've lived in mm. South Africa, I think. Yeah in, in Kenya. In Kenya yes. yeah. yeah the last the last five years and it's entertaining being a Rovers fan in exile and <laughs> and supporting from a distance. And now you're, you're back and you're living near Dorchester where we happen to play next week. Exactly. It's going to be about 20 minutes down the road for me, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Mike, 
what's the attraction of, of keeping this going? Because you might, it must be like painting the fourth bridge. You must yes, it is. Time. Obviously, say no sooner if you've published something that's out of date. Uh, like players leave, and uh, obviously old players die, etc. Um, and so it, it is a continual process of, of of changing things. Really, you know, a new new. Uh, Match gets played today, so there's another record created. All the 11 players, or however many players, are going to play today. So, yeah, just going back to the who's who, I mean, the original who's who was only uh, football league players from 1920 to 94, but the, the new book we're hoping to, or uh, format of book we're going to produce, will actually involve every player back to 1883, which Stephen's done a fascinating job in tracking down. Uh, lots of those players, obviously we, have, we can't get every one, but uh, I mean, some of them might have only played one game for the Black Arabs in 1883, but it's surprising how, with our research, that how many have come to light and we're still researching it on a day-to-day -day basis and finding new information. Interesting in your book, uh, a lot of people I know co collect a lot of Roman memorabilia, but this really is the Bible, isn't it? We'd like to think so. I mean, um, to cover each season, and obviously people very interested in what's happening today but obviously uh, lots of generations of people are interested in what happened in the past obviously the clubs had uh, promotions relegations fires bribery scandals uh, floods um, so it's all in there um, we've had you know trips to Wembley uh, in recent seasons um, and it's all in there um, so yeah, the club hasn't, you know, has had a checkered history recently, but certainly going back um, into the 1950s, which was probably the club's best era, uh, the club was averaging 25,000 people in, in second division matches, which is what the championship is today, and came very close in 56 and also in 59 to getting promotion to the dreamland of what was, was division one and was now the premiership. So the club's come close in the past, and I'm sure whole generations of people would like to learn and read about how close Rovers came, and um, with a, perhaps a little bit more good fortune and perhaps a bit more investment by the club, uh, we may well have um, be, uh, had some premiership or first division history. But uh, we always live in hope, of course, uh, that that's going to come along, but uh, we're on the long road back at the moment, so uh, fingers crossed that we can do something and get, get back in the Football League uh, at the earliest opportunity, hopefully this season. Finish on positive. No, just, sorry, Stephen. You... I, was, I was just going to say, any Rovers fan who wants to read about the 20-0 win at home, or the 7-0 defeat at home as well, anyone who wants to read about the Tory MP who played for Rovers, or the vicar on the right wing, it's all in, in this book here.